So we have our free version of Hoboware open, and we have our energy logger connected with an a uh, FlexSmart analog module, or the CVIA module. CVIA stands for Current Voltage Input Adapter. So we're going to go into the launch screen. Hoboware detects we're connected to COM4, and we are going to configure that module. So as we've seen before, Hoboware goes out, it scans the module and we or the uh, the logger, and we see connected to our energy logger, we have a uh, an analog DC1 or an SFS CBIA, which is the part number of that device. So S is for smart sensor, FS is flex smart, CBIA is current voltage input adapter. You can see we have two channels. Each module represents two inputs. It is a single module. You can put up to three of these optional modules into your data logger. Notice we, we see um, the serial number displayed. These modules are aligned in Hoboware in hierarchical serial number order. So if I had three modules in here, they would be aligned here in the sensors block of Hoboware in order of serial number, not by how they are plugged into the module, the physical module um, ports. This is a bus, it's a common bus. So Hoboware always aligns these in um, serial number order, lowest to highest, no matter where they're plugged in. And it's the same with smart sensors. It does it, does it the same way. It doesn't matter what physical connection it has. It's a common bus. So it, it, it aligns them by serial number. So from the factory, you get the CVIA when you plug it in, one channel, says voltage, the other says current. These can be configured for either voltage or current. It doesn't really matter which channel. So don't be dissuaded by that and say, oh, number one always has to be voltage, number two always has to be current. That's not true. They are identical, those, those modules, uh, those module channels. So to configure the first channel, we click on the little box here, and it should say configure sensor. And that gets us into the configure sensor window. So we can see here's the, the modular port name, the firmware version that's in that module, the serial number, the sensor number is the channel number, so that's channel one of our sensor or our module. And the sensor name, we have two pre-configured sensor names, either voltage or current. You can also put in a custom name. So if you were m measuring some analog uh, input and you wanted to name it, this is where you would name it. It would show up in your data set. Below that is where we can turn on excitation power. The CVIA module can provide 12 volt excitation to your sensors that require excitation to a maximum of 200 milliamps. And the 200 milliamp limitation is across the entire logger. So if you had six analog modules or um, six analog channels or three analog modules installed, the total excitation current cannot exceed 200 milliamps for the whole um, logger. So to configure excitation power, we would click on, again, set excitation power, and then check off excitation power used to enable it. Hoboware, or this logger, supports either continuous power, so continuous 12 volts, as soon as you turn it on, the power is turned on to the sensor, or we support uh, a programmable warm-up time. The way the warm-up time works is in this configuration, you can see we have a one second warm-up time. One second before the logging interval happens, the sensor will be powered. Then the logging interval happens, it, the measurement is taken, it's recorded in a data file, and then that power is turned off again until one second before the next interval. This considerably saves on battery power if you're running off battery. This particular logger has an optional AC power supply, a wall wart they call it, that plugs into the wall. So if you're using that power supply, you can use continuous power, select continuous power, and not pay a penalty in battery life because you're running off the AC. If you are running off batteries, it's strongly recommended to use the warm-up time. It will really help save on your battery life. So if, we, if we're happy with this configuration, we click OK. 
Below this is we need to select what type of measurement we're going to be making. The CVIA, by definition, CVIA, current voltage input adapter, can take a voltage input up to 20 volts DC or a current input of 0 to 20 milliamps or 4 to 20 milliamps. So with voltage selected, we see that our raw input, so value 1 is 0 percent, value 2 is 100 percent, we see that our units is voltage if we selected current. This would change to milli, milliamps, and this is where we can put in 0 to mil, 20 milliamps or 4 to 20 milliamps, depending on what kind of sensor we're using. Let's say this is a 4 to 20 milliamp output log uh, sensor. We'll go back up here and change our sensor name to current. And, and again, this will be the name of the sensor. And again, you can name it anything you want using the custom configuration. So what we're saying is that the 0% output of this third-party sensor, this sensor, is 4 milliamps, and the output is 20 at 100%. And then we can set up a, a relationship to how we want this to be uh, displayed in the data set in engineering units. So if it's, if it's gauge pressure, if it's differential pressure, if it's some other type of measurement, we can set up that relationship here. Before I put in a manual scale factor, I just want to talk about the buttons at the bottom of the screen. Help should be self-explanatory. takes you to the help um, menu in Hoboware, the help um, document. If we click cancel, we'll get out of the screen. If we click on load, this takes us to a folder on our computer that was created when Hoboware was installed. And it's called Hoboware Public Files. And it includes these HCFG files, which are hobo configuration files. So what these configuration files include are all the different third-party sensors that Onset currently sells directly and these are all pre-configured configurations for those sensors. So it includes for example this one here is a hundred uh, 100 PSIG um, gauge pressure transducer. So this gives you the ability to if we selected this it will scale it as 0 to 100 PSIG and it will turn the excitation on to the manufacturer's recommended excitation of 30 milliseconds. So if I if I click on this one, if I say okay this is the sensor I have connected and I click on continue, notice my scaling and everything is all set. I have a sensor name called pressure, I have my excitation uh, turned on with a 30 millisecond warm-up time, my voltage type is set correctly for 5 volts because this is a 0 to 5 volt output log, uh, sensor. And then we can see that at 0% output with 0 voltage out of the sensor will read 0 PSIG, pounds per square inch gauge pressure. And at 100% we will have a 5 volt output out of that sensor and that will be represented by 100 PSIG. So your data will be represented as 0 to 100 PSIG instead of 0 to 5. If you didn't scale this, all you would get was that raw 0 to 5 volt output. So if we click on configure right now, this configuration will be sent to the analog module and it will be stored in it. These modules, both the TRMS and the analog module, include um, technology that makes this configuration sticky. In other words, when I send this configuration to the module, it's written into this module and it stays in that module until it's reconfigured. So the module can, once it's configured, can be removed from the logger, put in a different logger and retain its configuration. If we want to put in a custom configuration, in other words, if we're using this on some other third-party sensor, let's say we want to use it on a sensor that m monitors water level based on pressure. So we're going to create a sensor name using our custom configuration, and we want to call this water level. Again, this isn't an outdoor data logger. This is strictly for... Um, or uh, an example, but again, some people use water level sensors indoors for um, water treatment plants and things like that. So click on OK. And this particular device needs a half a second warm up time based on what the manufacturer said. So we're going to configure it for a half a second warm up time. 
This device outputs a 4 to 20 milliamp signal, so we're going to select current as its measurement type. So we know it's it outputs at 4 milliamps at 0%, 20 milliamps at 100% output. Under scaled, we want to put in how this device is scaled for this this water level sensor, it outputs its signal that represents feet of water. So we're going to say feet. And this particular device, it's 0 to 5 feet of water level. So this is what we're saying is at 0 feet of water pressure or water level, we output a 4 milliamp signal. And at 5 foot, we output a 20 milliamp signal. So we have this module configured to measure water level. It will power that sensor. It will wake up a half a second before it takes a measurement, power up that sensor, allow it to stabilize, and then turn off until the next logging interval. It's important with excitation power and warm-up to make sure you have a long enough warm-up period to allow that sensor to stabilize. And it really is dependent on the manufacturer's recommendation as to how long you want that excitation warm-up time to be. If we want to save this in our configuration folder for future use, again, once we configure the module, you click configure to send this configuration to the module and write it into the module. But if you want to save it on your computer as a configuration file, click on save, and then we can call it something like water level configuration or whatever we want to call it, click save. And now the next time, if we want to configure another module, we can just click when we access that module we can click on load and then click on configure we'll load that configuration from the hard disk in our computer into this configure sensor screen and then click on configure and it will be loaded into the module so now we want to click on configure to send this configuration to that module and we click on configure and hoboware should give us a, a success it says configuration successful would you like to configure the next channel on this sensor again if we say yes, it will take us to the second channel of this analog module. For this application or this um, example, we'll just say no, and it will take us back to our launch screen. And we'll see now that our first channel is configured for water level. We're ready to hook up our sensor and get started with our deployment. If we're not using the second channel, we can disable it. And that will save on if you're monitoring multiple channels. Again, this logger has a limitation of 15 total data channels. Data channels, for lack of a better description, are memory are, are measurements. So each module represents two data channels. You can also plug in smart sensors into the smart sensor bus. You cannot exceed that 15 data channel limitation for any of our smart sensor loggers.